I'm Chris Friani here on The Plastering Show with British Gypsum. This week is Mental Health Awareness Week and mental health issues affect plasterers more than any other trade. So I'll talk to plasterer John Durant about his own experiences and challenges with mental health issues. Fix Radio. This is The Plastering Show and joining me now is John Durant, a plasterer that works alongside his daughter Lottie. Now John, we've talked to you and Lottie many times about the great work you're doing together in the trade. Now today we're talking about mental health. How has mental health played a part in your life and what has been your experiences? Uh, So um, mental health um, has been with me now uh, with, well, it's always with you, but it's been with me now as a, an issue for the last 18 years. Um, I was diagnosed as being bipolar, which some people might know is actually the old term for it was called manic depression, where you could be really high one at one period in your life and really depressed with the other. So I suffer from that. So, uh, yeah, that's my that's my side of mental health as I know it, and that's when I started to understand it. Right. Okay. So, how has mental health affected your ability to work in the past? Oh, mental health has absolutely devastated my ability to work in the past. Um, I've had several episodes uh, of manic depression. Um, the latest one, I was um, depressed for eighteen months. Um, just literally sitting on the settee, doing nothing, just doing the bare minimum. And, uh, yeah, so completely unable to work for 18 months. Really? That's, that's, that's too long, John. That's too long, isn't it? So, yeah, that's after, it... that's after, you know, several weeks of being in hospital. So, you know, my condition was so bad, I had to be hospitalized. Right. Yeah. So that, that, that's seven, like staying in hospital, you're hospitalized and you're in there for a few weeks, are you? Yeah, I was texting Chris. I had no choice. They told me I had to stay there. <laughs> All right. All right. I didn't know that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So how has the trade played a part in affecting your mental health, both negatively and positively? Uh, being in the plastering trade has actually been positive to my mental health because uh, I worked out quite early on or in a period of time that actually um, physical work was a lot better for me. Because physical work, um, you know, naturally tires you out. And um, that's why I do it. Because my, with my mental health condition, what happens is and my brain goes faster and faster and faster. So if I'm doing um, like more technical administration work and I've been on a computer all day and answering emails and telephone calls, my brain's still going. And it's the it's a lack of sleep that actually... Um, you know, in, inflames my condition to the point that I need to go into hospital. So that's why I've made a, a conscious choice to do um, uh, physical work. So that that's basically why I, 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 I'm a plasterer now, so I'm doing physical work. So what did, what did you do when you left school then? Oh, i done all sorts, Chris. I went to university, I, you know, I've done several degrees. I, you know, I've done engineering. Oh, I've done youth work when the kids were younger, all different things and that. But I, I, I tried, I tried to, um, what I did was try to, um, all the knowledge you get from being a, a plasterer or in the building trade, I amalgamated that all together and I became a building surveyor. Um, and so that was where I went into an office environment and, um, it was computers, emails, uh, and all the rest of it and just telephone calls all day long and that, you know, over a period of time, I, I just burnt myself out and to a point where I, you know, I, I it was just staring at the computer, not knowing what to do next. Uh, and, and soon after that, I, I actually, you know, I was admitted into the hospital. And, um, and then after being discharged from hospital, when they take away your driving license, you know, you're not able to work because of insurance purposes. That's when you sit at home with nothing to do, and, that, and that's when my 18, 18 months of depression started. So, And then it was a long, long recovery back from that. How long have you been back on the tools then, sort of day-to-day plastering? Oh, probably about three years now. It took a long, long time. I was, it, my uh, mental health condition was su- it's such a bad point at one time that I suffered from something called panic attacks, which... Um, in my case, was your heart's racing and racing, your throat's constricting like you're being choked. 
your thoughts are all over the place and it's the worst experience I've ever suffered from. It's horrific. Um, and, and that really, really dented my confidence big time to, to a point that I couldn't catch, catch a bus from one bus stop to the other. And uh, after a while of doing eight, like 18 months of depression on the sofa, I just thought, John, you've got to push yourself here a little bit. You've got to stretch yourself. And then that's when I started taking a bus, literally from one bus stop to the next bus stop and back again. And it took me about you know, two months just to get into Bath, which is about 10 miles from my house. So it was a long, long time to, um, you know, stretch myself to back to anywhere near where I could even contemplate going to work or be able to work. Right. Okay. So this was a positive move from you to get back out there. And then did you stop sort of putting the word out that you were back on the tools, ready for work? And was that, was that your sort of re- recover, recovery? No, I thoughts? Start, uh, no, I start off very gently. I took a part time job in a, in a, a care home doing maintenance, which is 10 hours a week. And even when I started that job, even though I've been in construction for 20 years at that point, I was still doubting my confidence to be able just to do simple things like adjust door locks or rehang kitchen units or anything like that. So I did that, and thankfully that sort of pushed me on to like, yeah, yeah, I have got these skills. I, you know, confidence is coming back. I can do these things. And then I went out to labouring, which was like 40 hours a week, and then eventually went into plastering. Fix Radio. Time to crack on. I'm Chris Frediani, still here with John Durant, a plasterer that has been talking about mental health and how it's affected him in the past. It's Mental Health Awareness Week, and something I've learned is that it's good to talk and be open and honest about mental health. So picking up where we left off, John, why do you think mental health is something we tend not to talk about too much as tradespeople? Well, I don't think it's actually a a, a trade-specific Thing. I think it's just a, a society thing. I just think is is men that we don't talk about our mental health. Uh, and, you know, we, it, it's seen as a sign of weakness. That, you know, um, that um, if you suffer from a mental health condition, you, you you keep it to yourself and you don't talk to your mate about it. So I don't think it's a trade specific thing. I think it's actually a society thing that it's seen as a, a sign of weakness if you can't cope or you're, you're getting stressed or you just can't function. So I think it's not a trade thing. I think it's a specifically a social thing. I, I looked up beyond the, uh, just before I come on the radio, um, male suicides account for three quarters of all suicides in the UK and something like 7,000 men die each year from suicide. So it is something we, we definitely got to start talking about. And we got to start talking about it in the same terms as we talk about physical health. If I went into hospital because I had a heart condition, then everybody would say, oh, John, I hope you're better, I hope you're better. I went into hospital with a mental health condition, and a lot of people wouldn't talk about it. I made a conscious decision I was going to talk about it because I don't want it to be a taboo. It needs to be something we talk about, otherwise we're never, ever going to see male suicide rates go down. No, oh, mate, no, no, no all, all for that. Now, John, you're quite involved with the plastering community. What's it been like talking to fellow spreads about the mental health challenges you've been going through? Oh, yeah, yeah. If, um, from my side, I already talked about my mental health quite a lot. And like I said, I already made a conscious decision I was going to do that. But I've seen quite a lot of um, uh, um, gents, it tends to be, posting about their mental health. On a group called, uh, it's on Travel Talk on Facebook, and I just want to big up um, Stuart Roberts for setting up the group and creating a culture where the um, tradesmen can say, do you know what, I have had a hard week, I am suffering, I, you know, I've got anxiety issues that are stopping me going to a customer's house, has anybody else been into this situation, and, and can anybody help me out, or stuff like that. So big up to Stuart Roberts and Travel Talk for uh, creating that uh, tip community within the plastic industry yeah why is it important then to share and to be honest with each other about your battles with mental health well it, the trouble is when you when if you don't share then it's just got the same thought process is just going round and round in your head uh, uh, and us just being um human beings i think that, that it's just generally that the when those thoughts are going round and round in your head it's a spiral downwards rather than a spiral upwards 
And I think as soon as we start talking um, um, about what we're thinking and what we're going through, uh, then, you know, once you start expressing how you're feeling and the rest of it, it it's, it's a kind of relief, do you know what I mean? That you're not the only one in that situation and you're not the only one going through it. And I think when we have these conversations, it works. And we're well, lucky to be on a big site at the moment with lots of banter and lots of chat and the rest of it. But there's also times where, you know, when your mate says to you, look, I'm having a hard time at the moment, this is happening, that is happening. Instead of saying, yeah, all right, mate, what's for dinner? You can sort of say, oh, that sounds quite hard. Or, you know, I've been into a similar situation than that. And, you know, it is tough. You will get through it kind of conversation. And, and then just the next day to say something like, how was it last night? What's changed? Is anything progressed? And all that kind of stuff. Just keep these little chats going. It doesn't have to be in depth. It doesn't have to be, you know, psychiatrist level. It's just those little checking in with a ma- your, 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 your mate in the van or something like that. It's just keep that dialogue going. Don't be afraid to have conversations about mental health. Right, okay. Now, for our listeners out there, there's going to be people that are going to sort of be, be putting themselves in a little box now thinking, do you know what, that, that John John sounds a bit like I'm going through. So for the, for the listener right there, what has John done to try and improve your mental health? I think, just, first of all, you just got to, you know, be kind to yourself and realise that you're not always going to be in good um, mental health. Uh, uh, and, you know, just allow yourself if you're not feeling a hundred percent, then you know, be kind to yourself. We don't all feel a hundred percent. Some, you know, some of us, you know, down to ten percent, one percent, and the rest of it. Just be kind to yourself. Look after yourselves. Eat properly. Try and get some nice, good sleep patterns going. Exercise is key. I think exercise and mental health, are, you know, are bedfellows. Um, you know, have a look and see what support there is out there. You know, go, if it's so bad, then go to your GP, speak to your GP in the first instance. Have a look on, you know, on um, Google and see what other groups are there, out there. Uh, and, and, you know, try and get to you speak to someone about what you're going through because you won't be the only one. And once you, if you start opening up, then hopefully then, then someone's going to be able to help you. I think if you're trying to deal with these big issues on your own, then... Uh, your progress isn't your your progression and improvement is not going to be so good and, uh, until you open up and say do you know what this is how I feel John look thanks for coming on and sharing and I hope we can encourage the listeners out there to speak about their own mental health challenges it's 